Good evening, wonderful people, great dear friends, wherever you are. On the face of this very planet, once again, this very glorious evening of the 21st day, Sunday, the 21st day of June, in the year of our most high, Yeluhim, Chikukika, Biyama, Premi, Yenine, 2020, with the time now, standing at exactly six minutes past seven p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra. I welcome each and every one of you, and as I do so, I will, or should I say, should encourage you to welcome all those who are around you, because this very live presentation is going out to you in every time zone on the surface of this very planet. If you are dedicated, if you are serious, if you want to extricate yourself from the pain and the suffering, if you want to escape the damnability of the zoological republic, you must be listening to us at this precise moment. If you are not, you are doing yourself a great disservice. Here we have come to preach the truth, unadulterated gospel of redemption. Some may not like it. As I said during my last broadcast of a precisely seven days ago on Sunday, I did say that it was Armageddon. After that very broadcast that things will no longer be the same. And once again we have been proven right and things are not the same. All the workouts of iniquity all those who are blinded by what I call religious buffoonery, they have all been confounded. They are running from pillar to post. They are confused, as I knew they would be confused. Because they cannot see in the spirit. They are blind. Things of the spirit are lost on them. But this very day we shall continue. As I said during my earlier post, if you know that those of you who are, or should I say, weak constitution are listening, then I will seriously encourage you to disengage because the program tonight, it may not be as hot as it was seven days ago, but I can assure you it won't make for palatable listening for a great majority of you. But we must proceed all the same. I will say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you, because the whole world is listening. The whole world is listening. Before I came here on air, I did get a confirmation from Facebook that they are seriously suppressing and interrupting, should I say, people visiting to my page. They are doing all they can to make our work impossible. But they will always fail as they have failed previously. We are live on satellite. Those of you with strong decoder should be able to listen to us, which is what most of you are using in Abuja anyway. If you are in Biafra land, you will listen to us. If you are fortunate enough, via FM, one of our CHKs that is broadcasting in the land of Biafra. If you have a smart device, which most of you do have, you can listen to me by going to my page on Facebook, Martin Nandekano. I have nearly about, say, 300,000 likes, so you shouldn't be able to miss it. There are a few other ones set up by DSS to try to lure people away, to try to confuse people, but have failed. The same way that every enemy we encounter crumbles, that is how they too have crumbled. We are also on Radio Biafra app. And very soon we are also going to be on IPOB app as well. Right now we are on Radio Biafra app. You can get us via tuning. You can also go to, get us via Sweet Radio. You can get us back. All these names I'm mentioning, just Google them. Log in. Just search for Radio Biafra. You'll be listening to my voice immediately. Some of us have decided to stream us live also on YouTube, which I understand is the means through which most of you are listening. 
And I will encourage you to also go to Garden Radio as well. In all these places, you will be able to hear us. This evening, live and direct. I say evening, because of where I'm domiciled this evening, the same time as you have in the land of Biafra. My name is Imam Dekano. I am the leader of IPOB, indigenous people of Biafra all over this planet. We are in over 100 countries and counting. We are the largest mass movement on the surface of this very earth, bar none. We are a juggernaut, unstoppable. There is nothing anybody can do, not now, not tomorrow, not ever. We are unstoppable. Our march is towards Biafra. To restore Biafra, nothing more, nothing less. And this very generation of IPOB will accomplish it. Do you want to know why we will accomplish it? Because we always put Chukukika Diyama first. God Almighty in heaven is number one. That is why we worship him and him alone. That is why we bow not down before any idol. And I never had a sin. I don't worship idols. And because of that, there was him said, as long as you proclaim my name in every truth and every honesty, Biafra will come in your time. And because his words are yea and amen, anything he says must come to pass. That is why we have stuck on, stuck only unto this path of redemption. In truth and in every honesty. That heaven and earth may bear us witness that they came and they proclaimed the salvation of God Almighty in heaven. Their cries and their prayers were listened to. And they were set free. When I say that this is the last miracle on the face of this very earth, I meant it. And with everything that's happening around us, you now understand the enormity of the task that awaits us. What we must do to be free. That is why we are gathered this evening, morning, afternoon, night, depending on where you are. Because for those in Japan, I think it's about 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning. For those in Malaysia, Indonesia, I think it's about 2 a.m. in the morning or thereabout. For those of you in Los Angeles, it's 10 a.m. in the morning of Sunday. That's how it is, because the world keeps rotating all the time. When it is your morning in your time zone, it could be somebody's tea time, it could be somebody's breakfast, it could be somebody else's dinner, somewhere. That's how the world rolls. It waits for no one. When they say time waits for no one, it's because regardless of what happens, the earth will keep rotating around the sun. It will never stop. Every blessed day the earth is rotating at over 1,000 miles per hour. But you don't feel it. Because the grace and the miracle of creation is with us. Elohim is with us. I will must worship him. This very evening as we have always done. But I am going to pray a slightly different prayer in the language of heaven. Igbo language is the language of heaven. The oldest language on the face of the earth by none. Everything I say I have proof. I don't say something that I don't know. Everything I say there is proof. And I'm also going to prove it to all of you tonight, should you there or challenge me to do so. And I'm going to pray, I wouldn't call it a prayer, it is a prayer of God, because we are requesting something from heaven. We are going to pray a prayer of the Ten Commandments. And do you know why we pray this prayer? Because even those that founded the USA, United States of America, if you go to some areas in the USA, you will see a tablet proclaiming the Ten Commandments. And why is it very important that we pray this evening alluding to the Ten Commandments? Because that will be the very basic foundation upon which Biafra will rest. I repeat, the Ten Commandments of God that nobody disputes, not even Islam, everybody believes in it. That is the pillar upon which we are going to rest this new Biafra. That is my promise to God in heaven. And this evening I will affirm it. Biafra will be a godly nation. Secular, yes. Because you can practice whatever you want to practice, but it must be anchored on God. We don't answer Matuku for nothing. We don't call ourselves too much for nothing. It is for a purpose, a divine purpose. That purpose is that Biafra will come in our time. 
and the pillars that will hold the Afra is the mercy of God Almighty in heaven. Unashamedly, I proclaim, because I know the whole world is listening. They want to know the type of Biafra we're going to build. And I'm telling them this very day that Biafra will be a godly nation, anchored on the core values and principles surrounding the Ten Commandments that was given to Moshe on Mount Sinai. Unashamedly so, I say. And please, if you bow down your head, wherever you are, we are going to pray. Our enemies are not resting. We don't expect them to rest. But we must continue to preach this very gospel. The gospel of truth. Of redemption. And of honesty. This very gospel of freedom. Is anyone in a chile can not get from me? I'm in a chupo kika biyan bayan in a fena bisi ala nye. Tony kari na nanao badana ke nanao badana ya na achi. Oh, no, 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 we are going to be able to get the money. We are going to be able to get Nyehankasiobi Biafra <laughs> I am not going to I am not going to be able to do it. I am not going to be able to do it. I am not going to I Is that it? 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 Is that it?
Camara didn't do one get away and one apple, I saw what is good for Jobs and Nidhi. No more two days to one or any man to get on or blood and no one in the zone line more. Bundra can't believe it's standing in a palace. That's the only one who made it when a low one. Nemo coach me and come in a blank as I wait weaker. All the young men do a gozo, but I stand in his look and told young son. Is that a boy and man and you come on with the girl and I don't know. Is that a boy and man and I can't get to the other one by the money banning. Eja kwa hii nzima na wakoso, mabu mwen masebe mu ni yana mwen baka na baya na nakadi kwa nakadi kuhuri lezi chini na kana nanti igwe, nuko mwen kopo na wani ni diwe me, kandi dem diwe de, na wana mwen kuchini na kana bonya ni nefu, mwen ni bani nuzi, kama hagi na brege wezo kani mendo hani, kani onwa ni pone dem diwe bulia hamso ya li jare mama tui, sene bige marone bige, ise, ise, ise. We now proceed to unveil the truth this very day that the world may know because the zoo is crumbling. It has crumbled already. What happened in Ghana yesterday is just confirmation because this very year the zoo will be decimated beyond human comprehension or recognition never again will this will exist it's gone we have not done anything we have not commenced our march we have not confronted the janja with terrorists who are in our forests and in our farms we have not gone out to meet those who are killing us yet this zoo is unraveling before our eyes as always, I will endeavor to wrap every of our discussion this evening around a very common theme. And that theme is that if out of, should I say, a habit of treachery or a lifetime of betrayal, you fail to recognize the importance of the time that we are living in, then may the good Lord have mercy upon you. I need you to understand this very clearly. Because as I say always, we are a highly religious, I say godly people, let me put it that way. Some have turned it into modern day religiosity. What I want to make you understand this very evening is this. That every problem afflicting us as a people, as a race, is our own making. Every Difficulty that we dear friends are undergoing right now is our own making. And we trace it back to one common, or should I say, a simple denominator. And that denominator is slavery. Kidnapping in modern parlance and slavery. Which the whole world is now running around trying to atone for. Before we came on air, we understand that the Church of England of all places, Anglican Church was involved in slavery. I will tell you the truth. And quite frankly, I don't give a damn if you like it, if you don't like it, go and do your research. Also, the Bank of England said they are apologizing for their role in slavery. And I want to tell you why we are in this mess we are in today. Those of you who are very close to your scriptures, those of you that have the Bible or even the Quran with you, I want you to go to the book of Exodus chapter 21 verse 16. Exodus 21 16, that is the genesis of our problem as a race. This suffering we are suffering today if you go back to the Holy Book, if you go back to Bible, it is there. That was the beginning of our problem. Everything afflicting black people in America, every pain, every shame, every dishonor, you can trace it back to this. In the book of Exodus 21, 16. And before we proceed any further, you will also understand that Every time we say we are, we are in the land of Egypt, that the zoo called Nigeria is the land of Egypt. And I encourage you, if they kick you out of my page, 
We are on YouTube. You can go to Radio Biafra page as well. Because I know they will do the best they can to suppress us. <laughs> That's what they will do. But the world is listening. After this program, by the end of this program, nearly 2 million people will have listened to it. Live. 2 million will listen to it live. So that is why we are not bothered. That is why we are not concerned. That is why we will continue to do everything humanly possible to preach this very gospel of redemption. Exodus 21 verse 16. I want to let the whole world understand. I want to let the whole world know where our problems started from. That they may know the truth. And that truth will set them free. Once you commit this crime, once you commit this very crime, you must be punished. Your race will be punished. God will never ever forgive you until you are punished. I want to let the whole world understand that those of us who are the children of light, those of us that supply the bulk of slaves to South America, the Caribbean, and North America, the entire West Africa was more or less emptied. The most prized slaves are those that came from Biafra land. Go and check the books. You will see it and you would know. Do you know what the Bible says that in Exodus 21, 16? <laughs> very, very frightening about kidnapping your people and selling them. It says that he who kidnaps a man, whether he sells him as a slave, remember? Those who are, who are bragging that they are slave traders. They are slave dealers. I want to let you understand the reason why Niger Delta is in darkness this evening. More than any other place. Nigeria is darkness itself. Then inside that darkness there is a place that some people ignorantly refer to as Niger Delta. I want you to know the reason why they are even suffering more than every other person in the world called Nigeria. It is in the Bible. As I told you before, Elohim gives us message to give to the living and it is my duty and solemn responsibility to pass that on. Listen carefully. He who kidnaps a man, whether he sells him as a slave or you keep the, that very person, a fellow human being, your brother or your sister, you will surely be put to death. If nobody can kill you, God in heaven will kill you because those are his words. He that stealeth a man, or selleth him, or is found in his hands, he will surely be put to death. We cannot put ourselves to death because we sold our own people, first to the Arabs and then to Europeans. That is why God is today dealing with us. When they kill somebody, you campaign and you say black lives matter, or black lives matter. What you're saying is that I have sinned against God in heaven because we sold our own people as slaves. And why is Niger Delta suffering more than any other place that is not? I posted something last night that is no tangible, meaningful development. It's because go and check in the coastal, I won't call it Niger Delta, that's not the name. The name is the coastal region of Biafra land. Go to the coastal region of Biafra land and see for yourselves. The reason the people suffering most from the coastal region of Biafra land were the hotbeds of slave trade. Something that God in heaven is against. Not just there. I want you to also go to the book of Deuteronomy 24 7. To the book of Deuteronomy 24 7. If you go there, you will see what is happening. If you go there, you will understand what is happening. And the reason why you shouldn't be kidnapping people, because once you do that, once you kidnap somebody, you are bringing a curse, not just upon yourself and your family, you are bringing a curse on your generation as well. That is why it is absolutely critical that in the next coming weeks and months, 
When we come to confront the enemies who are within, the ginger weed that have come from all over the Sahel to take over our land, that we understand this. It is the cardinal rule, it is the cardinal principle that can never, ever, ever be breached. Because black people sold their own kind, that is why the world is treating them like the animals that some, some of them are. That is why the world is treating them like the animals that some of them are. If you go back to the book of Genesis, I am sorry to dwell on this, but it is very, very critical you understand it. If you go back to the book of Genesis, why did Israelites suffer in Egypt? Was because the house of Jacob, they sold their brother Joseph. The same thing that God himself was against was what they did. They sold him to the Ishmaelite merchants. The same thing that we did in the land of Biafra. The same thing that we did selling our own people, our own kind, first to Arabs and then to Europeans. And you expect God to love you. It is impossible. You must pay for it. And that is that punishment is what we are in right now. That was why Elohim in his infinite mercy and kindness decided to isn't it very funny that the same people that we sold our people to they come back, they conquered us. And they gave us their religion. Very, very sad indeed. Do you see how the punishment goes? The same thing that happened to the temple in Israel. When they started to worship idol, God went and brought all those nations that they were worshipping their idols to come and conquer Israel one after the other. And sack them. And on the pain of death, threatened never ever to worship God in truth and honesty anymore. Until they spent over 2,000 years in exile. Millions dead before they cried and God heard their cry and decided to deliver them in 1948. This is where you're looking at only coming to existence again in 1948. Since the time of Christ. Only 1948. Less than a hundred years ago. The Israel that you've been hearing about never existed for two, over 2,000 years. It only came to existence only in 1948, less than 100 years ago. And that is the understanding I want all of you to have as we delve into the main substance of our gospel this very evening. Have you ever asked yourself why is it that people who you are more educated than, more enlightened than, are controlling you? Have you asked yourself that question? Why is it that some of you, why is it that some of you never pause to even think nor ponder the absurdity that people that drive cattle from place to place, they are not very fluid in their own language, they cannot communicate very well in the lingua franca, which is the English language, but they are in control of your lives. Have you ever wondered why? Do you know why the British gave power over to the Ginger with the Caliphate? All are in the design of God in heaven to punish you for the things that you have done. But now that we have atoned consistently for nearly seven years, you are about to witness the might and the glory of God this very year upon the lives of his children. That when Biafra comes, you will know to worship God forever and ever. This year. You just watch and see. Because in the zoo, the account of Mark is out. I want to start with this. The account of Mark is out. And can you believe that in Arabia, you need to score 130 if you're a male, 130 if you're a female, to qualify to go to a unity school, which is the federal government secondary school. Now, in Arabia, this is one Nigeria for you. What is telling me is not that the Janja Waves are doing this and the Yoruba are supporting them. What is actually getting me angry is that our people, after seeing this, this level of entrenched injustice, year in, year out, month in, month out, somebody will still have the temerity to, to, to stand up and say, we want a restructured Nigeria, we want to be in Nigeria. I want you to understand the level of 
Oh my goodness. Idiocy in the brains of these people. That opened their mouth to talk about one Nigeria. Now we are all going to answer the question this evening. Can you tell me the reason why Abia said the reason why Enugu State is 134? Why Imo State is 138? Why is it that Imo 2 State is 127? Imo State is 126. Imo is 131. We are last. We are last in Taraba. In Yobe. You only need to score three or two. You went into an exam hall with your fellow countryman or countrywoman and you wrote the same exam and you came out and the, the examiners are telling you that if you come from Yobe State, if you come from Shampa, if you come from Taraba, if you come, come from Shobodo, the only thing you need to score is red line to be considered as somebody who have now passed that very exam. And for their females it's slightly higher. Because in Sokoto apparently the women go to school more than the men. Only 13. If you score 13, you qualify. After going to unity school, having scored only two marks. Two marks means in your state, once you go into the examination hall, you write your name. Uh, 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 you come out, you have passed. We are asked in other places, in Ogun State, in Hua State, for instance, in Enugu, in Ogun, in Delta, you must go over 110 to be considered. So somebody walks into an examination hall and writes his, his or her name from Yobe. They come out and they are now qualified to go to unity school. And you are in one Nigeria. Now my concern is this. Are you telling me that your pastors are not saying this? Are you telling me that those that claim they are part of um, uh, this um, let's keep Nigeria one, are they not seeing this injustice? Those that came out to protest for Black Lives Matter, don't they see this? Those that claim they have NGOs and fighting for equality, don't they see this? I'm asking, don't the British High Commissioner see this? Don't the U.S. Ambassador understand what is going on? Are you telling me that the German Ambassador is unaware of what is happening? Are you telling me that all the missions of every civilized nation to the zoo called Nigeria, are you telling me that they are not aware of this very broad daylight, blatant discrimination? Now I'm asking you, those that want us to be part of one Nigeria, on what basis therefore are you asking me to be part of one Nigeria? On what basis? This is why a lot of our men spend their time gossiping. They don't attack the issues that matter. I want to ask every senator, every House of Rep member, in which country of this world do you have not just the, the triple standard, one standard for Yobe, for, for Tarana, for Sokoto, for Zanfa, for, for, for Abuja, uh, for, for, for Katsina, for, for Kanu, for Kanuna, for Zigawa, and a different one for those in Imo, Abia, Croc River, Okun, Oshun. I, bet I ask you therefore, based on what is happening, these are our children those going to secondary schools. These are little children, the ages of 10 and 11. So, from that very age, you are telling them that they do not matter. That they have to aspire. Not to be excellent, but to be mediocre. Because if that is very sensitive, if someone who scores only two marks from you can go to unity school, then what is the incentive for starting to score over 130? Or 134, as the case may be, for Enugu and Imo. Just explain that to me. But you have senators. You have lawmakers. You have those championing one Nigeria. Saying Nigeria used to be great, it be great again. How can it be great? How can you subscribe to be in a society where somebody from somewhere, because they are janja weed, they don't go to school, they sniff glue from morning to night. They move cattle from place to place. They only score to. They, all they need to remember when they go to the exam hall is their name. And they have passed. Is that very fair? Is that how to run any country? 
And why are those who should be speaking out not speaking out? There are a rented mob of, should I say, unemployed and, and should I, slightly educated fools in Abuja. You know what I always write and um, petition. If you see their shirts, they always have a blue pen, a red pen, and black pen. They you know that plastic beak, they line it up. That's their petition writers, that's what they do. Hawking, should I say, their Iraq services to anybody who is willing to pay them top money. Do you see what they have done to you? Your own children have to score higher than them, but they, are, they want to be president. So you're telling me that somebody who is half educated, who can barely mention his name, is worthy to be president, after president, after president of a damnable contraption without those who are educated from the south. Just sit on the sidelines and just watch. And you're telling me that everything is right about this Nigeria. I want to ask the British High Commission because they are the ones that brought us in this mess. Are you telling me you're not aware of this? That is why we are going to write to each other one of them. To remind them, at least to inform them, that they are in a place where this, this, if this were to happen in the USA, the riots will not end. Where this will happen in the UK, the riots will never end. Where this will happen anywhere in Europe, you will have all commentators, all communists writing and talking about it from morning till night. Why are you not doing something in this record, Nigeria? Why not, I ask you. These are the things you need to ponder. These are the things that you need to consider because it's very, very upsetting. Very, very upsetting. And that is why the zoo must fall. That is why this doom must fall. People prefer to live on lies and deception. You know what is happening every blessed day. There is something I'm going to play for each and every one of you to listen to tonight. What is happening inside the zoo? You know these things very well. Your bishops they know. Your pastors they know. Your reverend parents they know. Everybody is aware. Your position they know. Your so-called elders, they know. But they have all kept quiet. Why is it difficult for an average Nigerian to confront evil and say that something is bad? All they care about is tithes and offering, tithes and offering, every person with tithes and offering, impunity is happening. They never come to the congregation and they say to them, Oh, my children, how come you scored over 100? You cannot go to unity school. There's somebody who only scored two. In Yobe is going to unity school, free education. And I ask this pastor, do you at all look at your congregation and ask them these questions? Are you put are you telling me that as a, as a so called elder, a senator, a house of reps, house of assembly, the government chairman, a council, are you not aware of this entrenched injustice? And I'm asking every Nigerian, tell me where else in the world such travesty will be allowed to stand. Show me where. You can't stand me. But you want me to be part of one Nigeria. This is why it will never work. Because all of you are hypocrites. You are all hypocrites. Now listen. The injustice did not stop there. Everybody is there now watching as violent Islam jihad is coming. Sweeping and killing people every blessed day. Cutting out of our past and throwing it all over the place. There was no outrage. There was no shock. Because a Biafran woman was killed. Her leg, her right leg cut off. Her left leg cut off. Her torso cut off. Her head cut off. Her neck is severed. Her hair is cut off. I don't see anybody complaining in America. I don't see anybody complaining in Britain. I don't see any uh, uh, diplomatic frenzy. That woman belongs to somebody. Has a father and a mother. Maybe children, who knows. Nobody cares, nobody wants to know. And after seeing all of that, somebody is telling me about one Nigeria. That is where I begin to, that is why I get upset with most of them. That is why I insult them. That means you are very cold, you are callous, you are evil. 
you want me to belong to a country where somebody can wake up for morning and decide to kill me for no reason and that person will just go scot free in most instances he or she will get paid for doing it because they are following him and that is the country you want me to belong to let us hear them to show you how evil the view is listen please hey. listen Can you hear me? Yeah, listen. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so, so the call by the governor. That's the, 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 the government stopped the influx of herdsmen from outside the country. Now, remember this. A governor is calling for a stop to the influx of herdsmen. And I've said this thing repeatedly. Can anybody then tell me why the southern borders are closed? You have positions in the south. So that is to tell you that every position you have in the southern part of the zoo called Nigeria is in the pockets of the foreigners in the north. And that is punishment from God. Because as we are selling slaves, so we are the Yoruba also. The, 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 the name is actually Dudu we will come to that later. Not, not um, Yoruba. Dudu Wa was also selling their own slaves. Those in Dakuna were selling theirs too. In Badagri. Big time. Selling slaves big time. That is why you see how God punishes people who go against him. Slavery is evil. Before other people around the world begin to atone for their role in slavery, Africans must first apologize to black Americans for selling them as slaves. We sold our people. A white man is not just woke up one morning and has come and started grabbing us. No. We are the world player. And this is the result of it. The same thing is continuing today. The same promise is continuing today. Those of them in the northern part of the zoo, the Fulani Caliphate, they opened their borders from Sokoto to, 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 to Medugri. Anybody can come in, into Nigeria. Go to Benue, go to Agatu, take land, rape their women and kill them. Our army is there, where that will protect you. Every fire will protect you. If you don't want Nigeria, you want me to belong to? But in the south, the borders are closed. And you're telling me that your so-called southern elders are that they are normal. You want me to respect them? They are there and this level of impunity is going on. And they get quiet. And you want because of one idea. Do you see how foolish you are? Those of you idiots from the south claiming that you want to be part of one Nigeria. How full how when will you develop brain and be able to reason? Why did they close your borders in the south? Let's open the ones in the north. Why? You don't ask questions. You don't in your life ask any questions. Nothing whatsoever. Because your brains are empty. All you care about is um, allocation. Or oh, we have to steal money. Or oh, which politicians to carry back for. After four years, who knows? You might start from the TC, transition chairman of the local government, and from there you can make your own money as well. You move your families abroad. You buy a, a fancy mansion in the USA, and you'll be traveling and coming back. And that's it. That's your one Nigeria. That is your lot in life. Because you're a southern politician. You have been programmed to destroy your own people. Especially in Biafra land, our own politicians by the lives of um, of um, Abaliba. All the rest designed to destroy your own race. That's all you do. Destroy your own people. Hear them from the north. Hear them very well. Hear them. The question has happened before yes. as to what to do with that movement within the country. So it's one thing to stop inflow from another country. Does this should this be extended to movements within the country? And if that happens, what happens to when they say, look, we've got right to move around? Those with the right to move around are the cattle herders, the following. You are telling me anywhere in the world are people normal? People are rising all over the world because of the death of one black man in America. One black man was killed and the whole place is going up in flames. Do you know that uh, a Biafra, an evil woman was killed, her body parts cut into pieces and scattered in a farm. Not one single protest. All those writing their long, long, useless grammar. I was waiting for them. Not one single protest. I said, not one. That is the, to show you how, how uh, subdued we have become as a people. Now, 
You're telling me in a country where you claim that foreigners are coming to kill you in your own land? And it is being discussed as if it is a, 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 they have just gone to a party somewhere. Just so flippantly. Hey, if you cross the borders in the north, how about those moving that said they have a, People are discussing the death of fellow human beings as if it is just nothing. As if they have just squashed a tiny mosquito somewhere in their room. Can you believe that? These are the things that when I think about it and a black man, I begin to go crazy. I don't, I, I don't understand these people. You'll be shocked. Listen. Yeah, the call, like I said, the call by the governor to stop the influx of the hatmen across into Nigeria is a very excellent uh, call, but it should go further than that. And I don't know whether uh, that call, uh, whether the government is together, whether the state governors are in, uh, in, in tune with the presidency, or each one of them is doing what he's doing in his own state. But one thing I know is that I have already said it here, that there are hundreds of thousands of these killer hard men, which the governor has confirmed that they are, they, when they come in, they are heavily armed. And in the country. This is a proof that you have no president, you have no vice, you have no body in power. I don't know how else to explain it to black people so they will understand it. That was why the Zoo High Commission, their embassy in Ghana was demolished. The Ghanaians know you have no president. How can you demolish, do you know what the meaning of an embassy? Sorry to digress a little bit from what they are discussing. That is, headsmen are coming in and killing you. The likes of El Rufai are arming and providing, should I say, political and military cover for these killers to come in to take over our land, to make the geopolitical space, the Nigeria that you have right now, the home of Polanese across the Sahel. That is their game plan. You know it and I know it. Now the question is, what are you doing about it? We know what we are doing. All of you talking about one Nigeria. I want to ask you, is it in the education system? Is it in the which aspect of life is salvageable in Nigeria? I said which aspect is salvageable? Which aspect is salvageable? There's none. The killers are coming into your country and this man that is being interviewed by channels is saying presidency. Where is that hard man who has it? Oh, he's his potency. His potency will come. He is a hard man. He's a general. Where is he? Have you seen how cleverly Chaneos no longer talks about Buhari? Oh, where is the president? There's no presidency. Now, after all these pointers, what again is stopping you people from understanding that you have no president? Do you know the meaning of an embassy? An embassy is, is a foreign land let, let me put it this way. Let me not uh, use an abstract explanation. Anytime you go to the U.S. Embassy or their con in Abuja or their consulate in Lagos, once you walk into that premises, you are on U.S. soil. Nigerian government cannot come there to look for you. Remember Chile when Assange ran into Chilean Embassy in London. Did Metropolitan Police go there to arrest him? No. Did the army go there? No. Because that piece of territory is Chile. You can't go in there. International diplomatic protocol. Now, for once you invade an embassy, it is tantamount to the violation of that country's sovereignty. That is how important it is. For the embassy not to be invaded or no, it was demolished. The Zulu High Commission in Accra was demolished. You have not heard anything from the president of a country whose land was invaded. What does that tell you? Do you see why I am angry with all these fake pastors that are fixated on tithes and offering? Do you see the reason why? Tell me why a country, if you doubt me, go and invade the U.S. Embassy in Abuja. Trouble, as, as you are invading, the president of America will be talking immediately. Go and try it anywhere in the world. 
but you are telling me that the embassy, let me call it an embassy, the embassy of Nigeria was demolished in Accra. The president did not say anything because there is no president. Absolutely none. None whatsoever. Headsmen are coming in, they are killing. Do you now understand my anger against these people? This is what I'm talking about, the brain of a black man, inability to discern, to reason, to think. People don't even know about what an embassy is. They don't know the, the sanctity of an embassy. They don't understand it. You think it's just where you go and get a visa and you travel. Or where you go and get your passport renewed. Do you know of an embassy? That piece of embassy in... Who are, the, who are these people for goodness sake? Who are they? What sort of human beings are this? They never listen, they don't think, they don't reason. These are the people in this zoo we are talking about. And that is why we must leave the zoo as imminently as possible. Because some of our people, they don't reason anymore. They look like a ginger weed. Why they are calling, I have no idea. Why they are calling, I have no idea. But they will call anyway. They will call. That is who they are. That is the way they reason. Very, very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. As I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted by that caller who is not paying attention. They are not listening. Because if it's listening, why would they be calling when the lines are not open yet? Why would they be calling? Do you see the reason why blacks are in a mess? Do you now understand it? Why we are in a mess? Do you see the reason why the foreigners can do whatever they can and get away? Because every ambassador in the zoo has been bribed. UK. U.S., Germany, all they are there for is how much they can loot at your politicians are looting, so are they looting as well. Since you want to destroy yourselves, who we'll help you destroy yourselves? That's what they're doing. Do you now understand it? Do you understand it now? The mess that people are in. The building block for every Society, so to speak, is fairness, equity and fairness. What is the fairness in having different cut of marks? Not just maybe 10 or 15 or 20. I have to get one 34 from Imo State to go to school. There's somebody that is a ginger wood from the north will need to score too. And when you have them as president, as a um, uh, 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 finance minister as the head of strategy and planning in the Ministry of Finance as the head of budget you want your country to move forward to be like Singapore to be maybe like India to be growing are you not insane? because from their education you shall know them I have said it before and I continue to say it that the reason why we are so messed up the way we are is because we are in darkness born some of you born into darkness I was born a Biafran. Some of you are born into darkness. So you don't know any better. And we are the light of the world. I say it because every Abrahamic faith that you have, the three great religions of the world, which is Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, everybody alludes to the fact that God is light. I said everybody. From the Old Testament to the New to the Quran, Everybody acknowledges that God is light. And you come from a place called darkness and you want your lives to be better. How can it be better? In the book of Isaiah 60, 19 to 20, it says this there very clearly that Elohim will be your everlasting light and your days of sorrow will come to an end. We know what we are doing. Sometimes, you, if you don't understand it, just say you don't understand. Is it the book of Psalm, Psalm 97, 11, that the light shines on the righteous and joy on the upright in heart. Everything is about light. Everything is about light. It is everywhere. All the way to the book of John, 1, 15, you know, Ecclesiastes 11, 7, everywhere is replete with what light represents. That light shines in darkness, and darkness can never overcome it. We are the light. We, dear friends, we are the light. And as the name implies in Nigeria, which means the darkened of black territory, 
can never ever prevail over us. Do you see where we anchor our agitation on the promise of God? When I say we are anchoring our agitation on the promise of God, people don't understand it. They think we are being too religious now. I, I went to, I studied both the Old Testament that underpins um, of Judaism, New Testament that underpins Christianity. I even went to Quran. Do you know I'm studying Quran? And I found the same thing. And I wish I can tell it to you. The place we found in the Quran is Surah and Noah. 24 and 5. Surah, S U R A H, and A N Noah. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. Do you know what it says there? That Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. That God is light. This is what we call us again. Even in Islam, they know who we are. That we are the children of light. Do you understand it? Because this Surah and Noah 24-35 says God is, I'm now quoting Quran for you so you understand it. Because we are scholars, we read. I'm quoting Quran for you so you know. God is the light of the heavens and the earth. The example of his light is like a niche. Where is a lamp? The lamp is in a crystal and the crystal shining as if it's like a pearl. Like a radiant star. Lit from the oil of a blessed olive tree that is neither of the east nor of the west. That little name you answer in here, people don't even know it. Light in here. That we answer in our villages, you have no idea. I'm telling you that every major religion in the world recognizes who you are. But it's only you that don't know who you are. That is why you're subjecting yourself to a contraption built by a man, built by the hands of a man. Look at it. children of God submitting, instead of you to submit yourself to the creation of the Almighty, you're submitting yourself to the creation of a mortal. Very shameful and very disgraceful. But we are here to correct you. And as a result of that, you will remain mourning. That is why we have been suffering from day one. They keep shrinking us. They have now shrunk us so much that if you ask a typical idiot in Abuja, uh, uh, where is the Southeast? Uh, you go and there is the Southeast. Uh, the five states. Because of that pain and suffering that we are undergoing, that was why Elohim took over the Made us blind. We have forgotten there are Igbo people in Kogi. We forgot that there are Igbo people in Benue. We forgot that there are Igbo people in Cross River. We forgot that there are Igbo people in Aguaymo. We forgot that there are Igbo people in Bayelsa. Yes, Bayelsa. Yes. We forgot they took Igbo people away from us in Rivers. Took them away from us in Delta. Took them away from us in Edo. Now, are you feeling what I'm saying? Because we have become blind. We no longer seek the face of God Almighty in heaven. As our name says, I say what I say because of what our name says is who we are. That is our name. That is our own name that God gave to us. Because we represent the light. The name in the, is everywhere. All the way from Anambra, which is the capital of Igbo land, all the way. Every part is in here. Everybody answers light in here. In here. Light everywhere. And then you come and you, you cocoon yourself in darkness that is the zoo. And you want God to bless you. God cannot bless you in Nigeria. It's not possible. It is impossible. You, you, if you like, remain in Nigeria for one trillion years. God will never ever bless a Biafran. Like, individually, you may be rich. Maybe like, uh, you may be evil or innocent or whatever. You may be, you may be boy boy to change your way and they give you something and allow your business to, to thrive. But the road that leads to your village will be a death trap. You will encounter armed robbery. You will encounter civil strife. You will encounter pain. You will see suffering on the faces of those that will come to your house every morning. Your life will never be complete. If you don't know. Now listen to what is happening to us. There is no lockdown in the north. No lockdown in the north. In Biafra land they said we should lock down. 
we should go indoors and stay indoors and lock down, yes? And now let me tell you what is happening as a result of that. Let me tell you what's happening as a result of that. Listen carefully. She's speaking Igbo language and of course on Gwa dialect. They said it at home. So much everybody's not at home now, as usual. Now look at how we are being dealt with, how we are being punished. To tell you that the hand of God is in what is happening to us. I'm being honest with you. People who are not in the spirit can understand what we're saying. You can never ever understand what we are saying. Because we are now putting the two, that is why every force of darkness have now come to fight us. Including Facebook. And I want to be posted. Where Facebook openly wrote to me and said, we disagree with this your post that you made. We are limiting, which means suppressing the number of people that will see it. And that's exactly what I'm doing today. And who are those doing it? Yoruba people working for Facebook. Black people doing this. Do you now understand the mess? When I tell you that the heart of a black man is evil, people say, oh, you, you're elevating whites and uh, talking down on black people. But all the evil happening is from black people. The people suppressing, suppressing not just mine, every active IPOB family member on social media, on, on Facebook, his, his or her account is being suppressed. Have you asked yourself why? And those who are doing it. Do you think it is Zuckerberg in, in California doing it now? They got a contract from Nigeria. They took the money. They hired the people to put them there to be doing it. They said they hired how they said where they how they hired four hundred people to be managing BBC for them. They man, the production manager, the program manager for BBC people are all four hundred people. Are you aware of that? Our enemies are plentiful, but we are going to prevail. I'm, I'm telling you without any, without any doubt. We have prevailed already. I say without any doubt, we have prevailed. What they don't know is that Facebook doesn't control YouTube. We are there streaming live. They don't control the FMs in Biafra land. We are there live. They don't control the satellites. We are satellites live. They cannot tell TuneIn what to do. They cannot tell Sweet Radio what to do. They cannot tell Simple Radio what to do. They cannot tell Garden Radio what to do. In all these platforms, people are listening to us. That's the hand of Elohim. That's how it works. Let us listen to our mother. Uh, 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 the African governors are saying, Sit at home! Don't go out home! If you come out, we'll kill you! Meanwhile, <laughs> the Janja Wiz are coming from the north. Let's listen to our mother. From Umba. I will, I will interpret it for oh, oh, for you, please. Don't worry, just listen to her. In our own land, our mothers go to the farm. They said, if you come close, we'll kill you. We'll rob you and we'll kill you. In our own land, and brought their life. Why the government are saying, sit at home, not me, stay at home. Our farms are now fertile grounds for rape and murder, destruction of farm produce in our own land, in the land of the rising sun, the very center of this universe. I would say universe, I would say the earth. Can you believe that? These are governors. These are so-called political leaders. They foolishly call themselves the elite. Do you see what they're doing to you? Do you see why they hate IPOB? Do you see why they don't want us to survive? Because we tell you the truth. This is our mother in the village. Who will hear her voice if not for us? Who will hear the voice of this woman if not for us? Let's listen. They, they brought their cattle into, into our farms. Told our, they basically destroyed the farm produce. Fell into their, to their cattle. And say to our mothers, if you come, we'll kill you. Listen! They have guns. They have guns and knives. Our mother cannot longer go to the farm. As I told you, in the year 2013, I warned you. I said, a time will come. They will rape your daughters. Your mothers will be afraid to go outside. I told you, in 2013, I warned you. But you won't listen. You are doing one Nigeria. You see the sort of one Nigeria? 
Have you all of you idiots? I want to hear one want to be one Nigeria. You want to form a group uh, and counter IPOB. So want to be one. Have you seen your one Nigeria? Have you seen the result of it? As if you were whatever the idiot is. Have you seen the result of your one Nigeria? Have you seen the damage that done to us? Psychologically, our mothers. Because where we come from, our mothers don't go to the gym. They don't go to old people's home. They go to the farm. It's a form of exercise. They can no longer go to the farms. In our own land, in our own time, in 2020. People are running about, I'm a Nigerian, I'm a minister. They say, I'm the kind of thing with IPOB. Living to our mother in the village. Because you're in Abuja. I can eat the idiot that you are. You're in Abuja, fooling yourselves. You're in Lagos, fooling, fooling yourselves. As our mothers are in the villages. Afraid to go to the farm. They are dying of hunger. They can no longer go to the farm. These are our mothers. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? And people are doing. Uh, they are doing. Uh, or uh, I am God for an artist. They are doing evil offer. They are doing offer in America. They built evil village in America. But that's the one they have in the village. And the problem is, can't, their mothers can no longer go to the bar. And they have no shame. They are not ashamed of themselves. And when a white man looks at all these things that is happening, because you have no shame, that is why they treat you the way they treat you. You have no class and you have no shame. That's your mother. In the village. You are in America and in Europe. Talking about one Nigeria. Let's move the country. Uh, let us try and move the country forward and see what happens. You are busy speaking English you don't even understand. Whereas in the village, your mothers cannot go to the farm. And you are not ashamed of yourself. You are not ashamed. That is why I preach this gospel the way I do. If you look at the zoo called Nigeria, Ask me why people are quiet. Tell me why your pastors, even though they don't go in our back, tell me why you will not go and condemn this woman's experience. The pastor of the man just said, Right, that handbag is carrying you. Know, how much do you have there? Bring it. Put it in my palm. Your plight doesn't concern them. So, what you're doing is that you're, you're witnessing wickedness from every side, from politicians. From your clergymen, from those you call your elders, from the traditional rulers. And when things are this way, the only way forward is an absolute overhaul of the system, a revolution. And that's what we're having. And what we will have. Full of the they left the northern borders open to allow the territories to come in and take over our land. And any day now that we decide to go and confront them, you will see Channel TV. BBC, you see BBC? That won't come. Now they are killing us, BBC will not come. Never. You won't see BBC, that will not see CNN. Nothing, no, they won't come. But any day now, any day, you see what happened in, 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 in Delta State. In Apanam. You saw it. As soon as they've been killing and raping, the moment we rose up to say enough is enough, channels was there next. The next minute they were there. They are, we are all Nigerians. Don't move the Nigerians don't live in the forest. This is the reason why we said no to elections. Because we know the quality of politicians on display. We know they will never speak. We knew that a time like this will come that would require leadership. Strong leadership. And we also know that they will fail. Have they not failed? Have they not failed all of them? Even they are failed. To make matters worse, how they can open their borders in the northern black community is just beyond me. Now, the other interview I want to play for you. I want you to listen to what this man has to say. Listen to him to what he has to say. And as I said, if you are kicked off from my page, which they are doing, 
please go somewhere else and may play it. Just uh, download any of the apps and listen. Or go to YouTube. We are there. You can listen. The, the, the thing that can frustrate us. Idiots. That's how foolish they are. Listen carefully, please. Listen. A casino state. Listen. I went to Kwatarekwa Street. So along the Kwatarekwa Street, Kankara, Funtua Road. Uh -huh. I saw Hausa youth blocking the road. He said, Hausa youth. Fulani headsmen, Hausa youth. So anybody telling that the North is united, the North is not talking rubbish. Because of what we are doing now, the Hausa youth they have woken up. They have now seen what we saw many years ago. Hausa youth are now blocking the road. Hausa. Have you heard of that before? But if you see all the atrocities being committed by Fulani terrorists claiming their headsmen, you will think, you say, oh, it's Hausa Fulani. Do you see why I said, it is not how that place. The only Fulani that is causing this man. Have you heard this man? He was speaking on their national TV, which is channels, APC television, telling them the truth. For how that blocks the road against Fulani? Because they're fed up. But you have some people who are who are supposedly their friends in Abuja talking rubbish that they want to be one Nigeria. One of them are running away. You want to come put your head in it as usual. As, as I think you did. I look at where you are today. Your mother can no longer go to the farm. And you're not ashamed of yourself. Let them please. When I ask what is this, mm -hmm. they say that people are being killed. And how is that people are being killed? Are you listening? How is that people are being killed? How is that they are being killed? Are you listening? <laughs> government is not doing anything. Government is not doing anything. I. Why is the government not Because there is no government. That is why the government is not doing it. Because there is nobody in power. Nobody is in office. Are you listening? Nobody is there. They bring down your, em your embassy in, in Ghana. Nobody is talking. Foreigners are coming in, they say, with AK-47 to fight, to kill you in your villages. Nobody is talking. They go to Umba. They kill. They rape. They dismember our people. Nobody is talking. And you are telling me you have a government? Now, it is now that it actually dawned on me that let me tell you one thing. Your so called daddy GOs, that is your pastors, your politicians, and um, your uh, traditional leaders, they are all working hand in hand. They, now they can no longer sell us as slaves. Believe you me, eh? if they have the opportunity now to start slavery, they will start over again. Because they cannot sell us. The only thing left for them to do is to punish us as much as possible. To make our lives as, as miserable, as intolerable as possible. If we are dying, we can die. You are telling me that 40 years ago, even after the war, you will come into evil land, you will cut off a woman into, into six pieces. Scatter her bodies everywhere and nobody will do anything. Of course not. That is the sign of the times we are living in. This is the era of Ohanel Bengafron and Nushi. This is the era of 419 positions. This is the era of high-tech rigging. This is the era where Fulani Caliphate have come out full force to take over everywhere in this room. And it's happening before your eyes. The man is saying it. Even houses are being killed. Now tell me why everybody should not rise up and say to hell with these Fulanis. Who are the ones causing this problem? Are they falling now? Who else is doing it? Every other ethnic group is a peaceful group. I'm being honest with you. We move forward. Everybody is peaceful. Everybody is. Your right. Oduru why is peaceful. Biafra is peaceful by nature. How is that? Is even more peaceful by nature? How is that? They are peaceful people. Ask yourself this question: Who are the ones bringing all this killing? This man is always falling. Is them and they are the ones that need only two marks to go to school. Only two. They only need to score two to go to to, to school. Others will score one hundred and forty. Has I ever done on you before? Do you now understand the mess you're in? 
Do you understand the mess you're in? That is what we are trying. That is what gets us angry. And we are trying to make you understand. We speak English, you don't understand. We speak Hebrew, you don't understand. We speak uh, uh, AC, you don't understand. Which other? How do you want us to explain this to you so you understand it? That your life is a mess. And it is your responsibility, your duty, your responsibility to do something about it. Now listen, please. Listen carefully. Notice that a lot of the headmen that I talk to, uh -huh. they don't speak English. Uh -huh. I don't speak uh -huh. Hausa. Uh -huh. So I say, hey, tell me to me now. He said, keep quiet. I said, may I ask you why you, I, why you Magana, why is he not talking? He keep quiet. And they say, hey, Senator, for the French. They should talk, speak in French. And they say, two people say, say, we. Oui. And it's perfectly comfortable. And I should talk, continue to talk. I find some of these people are from Mali. So from Mauritania. Now, what we are saying is, Mali and Mauritania invading your land, coming to Africa, if you're going to Yemen, you're going across the Afra land, by Elsa, rivers, killing people at will. <laughs> I have a president. My God in heaven. Hey, Mr. G, black people, you black punishing. You people amaze me. You know, there is, a, there, there is a level of stupidity somebody will exhibit. You start avoiding them for your own good. When somebody says, I am a Nigerian, avoid that person for your own good. If somebody says, oh, we believe in one Nigeria, avoid that person for your own good. You are telling me that in a country <laughs> of... <laughs> Of professors and uh, lawyers and doctors and uh, uh, what I call backyard elites. People can come from Mauritania, from Mali, speaking lesser passé, lesser passé français, I don't know what they call it. They can come in into the zoo, car travel all the way to Benue, go to Akatula and kill people because they are fallen. So, in case you are wondering those coming from Mali and they are not just any, they are Fulani so, from Mali and from uh, Mauritania. Fulani, they come into your land and they kill you. And on top, some, some idiots will come and tell you one Nigeria. And it's time we start stoning them all. It's time we start stoning them. And to make matters worse, there are places now in Katina, AIT was reporting. Casino villagers now pay, pay monthly fees to bandits to invade attacks. Who call them bandits? Yoruba newspapers. Yoruba media. These are Fulani terrorists. They are not called bandits. They are terrorizing house people in Casino. Fulani bandits terrorizing house people in Casino. Why are they doing it? Because houses they are foolish enough to allow them to come into their land uh, 200 years ago. And this is the result. The same thing that some idiots want us to do now. Oh, what you want is restructuring. What I have been doing is not good. All I want is restructuring to restructure the polity. Fucking rubbish. Restructure so that we will sometime in the future. And I'm better to be like Katina. Where we will now be paying the, the full of the settlers in, in, um, in, um, what's it called again? You know, Bunike? We will paying them now to, maybe to go to stream, to get fresh water. You know, they're in the Bunike big time. They're there. Yeah. Come to be time. And some idiots in the USA claiming that from Obunike, they are just in the USA eating hamburger. Talking okay, rubbish in America. Where well, their village is gone. That's how foolish they are. How foolish they are. You know what's something about us is that we don't we don't see things or call things for what they are. The people of Obunike selling land and giving you the full and name. So full and name, Obunike is gone. Go and take one and let's see. The same thing that the houses did ignorantly and stupidly allowed families to come in. Today, they are as useless as, um, as the zoo itself. They are now paying bandits to be able, they are paying for the terrorists to be able to go and look for something to eat. In Nigeria, with a president, with a vice, with a chief army staff, are you for not that? Are you not? I, I have not, uh, why won't I speak to you anyhow? Because you behave like a, like a fool. I want me to give you respect. How is that possible? I'm asking you. How is that possible? How? Don't tell me how. You're in a country with the president, and people are coming from money from Mauritania to come and kill. And you keep quiet. And you, you're president? <laughs> you people are jokers. Honestly, you are all jokers, all of you. 
jokers in the, all of you in the zoo. You are you are a complete and absolute mess. What some of you don't know, keep saying it, is that some of your criminal pastors are working hand in hand with these equally corrupt traditions who are not only corrupt but very mediocre. They know how to do nothing. You don't have no life and electricity because they are evil, their mind, the same slave trade mentality. You know a black man to sell to make a fellow black man suffer is what they enjoy most. Black people. That is the truth. If not, why would we be selling each other? Why did we sell our people? Now we want everybody to apologize to Africans. That's rubbish. Africans, we are the ones selling their own people. Nobody needs to protect to us. I'm being honest with you. That is nonsense. Protect for what? It was black that sold black people. If anyone is to apologize to black people from Africa, should apologize to blacks in South America and blacks in North America. That's how to do it. We are the ones that sold people. If, if there is no market, nobody will buy anything. Now that all the all the supermarkets are shut, do, do you go out to buy anything? But if they open it, you go there and buy something. It was Africans that opened the shop to say, we have our wives and our children to sell. And the world came to buy them. As long as they come and there's no one to buy, they take it by force. That's how it is. Somebody will have looting everywhere. Isn't it? If you go to buy something in the shop and they tell you, oh, we're not going to sell to you, you lose the shop and you, you, you need something, you take it. That's how life is. Africans opened up their land to say, I have my uncles to sell. Some will say, oh, I, have my, I want to tell my mother. I don't have to let me tell my mom. And they said that without conscience, I want God to love you. <laughs> you must be saying That is the truth. Africans should be apologizing to black Americans for slave trade. You leave, leave Barclays alone and leave to the England alone. If you have no market, they will not come to buy from you. That is the truth. I am going to release our inquiry lines again, please. So if you see anything going wrong where you are, if you're, I want all of you to go and tell your pastor, your reverend father, whoever, you are a man, tell them next week Sunday is an assignment. They must speak out. If you don't know what to talk about, we'll tell them what to talk about. They must speak out and condemn what is happening. They must speak out and tell the truth that there is nobody in Asahok. What they do with things will be better for everybody. If they fail to do it, don't give them no offering. No offering. No tithe, no offering. They must speak the truth. They have a microphone and they must speak the truth. We care people everywhere. You see them? Publish those pictures, please. You see the pictures? They keep falling. When Jubril was there, they were not to see Jubril. Bishops, they go to see Jubril. They know that boy is was not is not a Buhari they met in 2015. They know it. And they can't buy them. They the word of God. Deceiving themselves. And I'm asking them, that boy you're going to see is that Buhari. All these bishops going to us along. That boy is there, there. Uh, of course, the Jubril he has not run away. The, 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 the little uh, that comedian that is there now. That they gave a wife to last week. Is that Buhari to you? That little boy is not even up to 25 years old. Is that what I told you? You are carrying the word of God, Bible. Some of you are carrying Quran. Come on to speak the truth. Because you don't want to speak the truth. And uh, Buratai was able to go. Not Buratai. Uh, who is there now? Maybe um, Ibrahim Gambari will send their flooding hit squad in the army to come and kill you. And uh, nobody will enjoy your private jet. And, um, and your choristers. You think we don't know? We know now. That is why you cannot speak the truth. And when I tell you the truth, you find it difficult to comprehend. Very difficult to comprehend. The people are there. Those that tell you that, uh, uh, and of course, in a way, uh, Buhari is the Messiah because Biafra is coming. I, I pray seven times a day. And every day I tell God Almighty in heaven to go with God Biafra. I want to have a Biafra this year. I don't want it to be this year. I want Black Friday 2020. I don't want to. I don't want to do one. No, this year. And this is a time for us to work very hard. Do exactly as I tell you, and you see what will happen. We must move to Twitter. You can see what Facebook is doing. We must move to Twitter before they buy up Twitter as well. We must move. They've done this thing to us before in Israel. 
they did, they bought the company using a company in America to buy it, and they, they, they terminated our contract. They, they tore up our contract as a result of that. They have now bribed Facebook, and Europe is working with Facebook. We must go to Twitter. I've been sounding this note of warning. Some of you don't want to hear. We must go to Twitter now. Because something will happen this year. We must go to Twitter. To let the whole world know our story. If the world don't know, they have all the money, they have all the media, the Yoruba media is working with them. Because Yoruba is half Islam, half Christian. So Yoruba will always work with the Fulanese. Anybody telling you Yoruba will come and work with you is deceiving you. Yoruba will always work with Fulanese forever and ever. That is a fact of life. That is a fact of life. Understand that very, very well, please. Please, public numbers again. On WhatsApp, please. WhatsApp only calls. Tell us what is happening in your church and your congregation. Tell us why your pastor, tell us what your pastor said when he went to the pastor and said, Pastor, why don't you condemn what is happening? And condemn the fact that there is nobody in Asherah. And then let us know what your pastor says. The number that I please publish it. Publish the number, please, on my page. On my Facebook page, please publish it. Somebody wrote very movingly that I should be very polite to people. Uh, I should say what I'm saying, but I shouldn't insult them. Uh, but uh, Americans bought you as slaves. The Europeans bought you as slaves. The two great religions of the world bought you as slaves. Christianity bought you. Islam bought you as slaves. That is the fact. You may want to deny it. You are talking rubbish. But of course, the first slave brain was sanctioned by the Pope. That is a fact. Historical fact. Go and do your research. Than being a sentimental African buffoon who doesn't reason very well. Go and do your research. You'll understand it. The Pope gave his... In fact, go and Google it if you want. It was the Pope that gave authorization. That's, that's nothing wrong with slavery. And I don't blame him. You had people to tell. Some of you wanted to, You sold your mother. You sold your father. Some of you came from lineage of slave dealers. Some of you in Abuja. And those of you petition writers with your pen. Uh, blue, red, and black. Looking for who to do boy boy for. Okay, I have something to write. I have an idea. Let me write. Against IPOB. Maybe you give me some money. My rent has uh, run out. So you don't know that? Some of you don't know. Some of you don't know. That is why you are wallowing in ignorance. Because what I tell you is the truth. The truth you will not hear from anywhere else in the whole world. You cannot body the truth. I, nobody will dare tell you this very truth. I told America. I went to America, and I, I was in, I was in Capitol Hill, and I told them, "You are every ambassador you send to Nigeria is a multimillionaire because they see the truth and they lie to the State Department." I told them in America, face to face, your ambassadors to Nigeria are corrupt. They were shocked. They were looking, they were looking at me. So what, what, what is I said yes. Yes. Hundred percent. Every ambassador from a major country going to Nigeria is a millionaire overnight. They buy their silence. If you go to the death park now, from Abuja to State House, from Abuja to the, to the foreign country, I don't know what is wrong with these mad people everywhere. They will not listen. They will not listen. And I'm going to turn this line off. Completely. For me, these people are mad. They're insane. They are insane. Insane. And I will block them. Never again will they be able to call this line. Never again. These people are mad. They're insane. Unbelievable. I have never seen. So that is why Fulania are, uh, uh, are make, making a mess of their lives. I don't understand these people. I don't understand them. I just don't understand them. And I will never understand them until Biafra comes. Perhaps they have been blocked. They will not be able to call again. Forever and ever. That's how it goes. You're, you're deliberately trying to disrupt the flow of this very gospel that we're preaching. Facebook is having a heart attack. Don't you know that? They're panicking. Right in the world, and this, this page is about to be unpublished. We will unpublish it. We are suppressing people coming to your page. We will continue to suppress it. These are Yoruba, 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 and Minyan. Yoruba are the ones doing it. Yoruba are the ones doing it. Very, very sad indeed. It's really sad. That's how it is with black people. 
That is why if you... The business guy will start telling each other to them. <laughs> it's from time. If there is no... Or you want to buy, like those that claim they are from... Uh, 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 now it's now south south. <laughs> if there is like a green clock, if there is no... Oh, you go to seven photo. Let me tell you to follow me. That's, what, that's how they make their money. All those talking about That is where they make their money. Of course, it took a... So it's Ecuador. I can't it's Ecuador, not Chile, please. It's Ecuador Embassy, not Chile. Ecuador Embassy. Thanks for the correction. I know it's Ecuador, it's not Chile. It skipped my, my mind, I don't quite remember. It's Ecuador that was taking refuge. That place, they took refuge in Ecuador, is... That territory belongs to Ecuador. I remember, do you know Prince Philip, the man you have now as the, the husband to her Britannic Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II? He was born in the UK. And when he was about to be born, the Prince Philip of Yugoslavia was about to be born, the hospital where he was born was converted into a Yugoslavian embassy. And was declared Yugoslavian territory because he is not allowed a future heir to the throne cannot be born outside Yugoslavia. Are you listening to me? The hospital was named declared Yugoslavia so that the child prince can be born there. So in the future he could have inherited his um, his throne. That's how things are done. Every embassy is your home. If the police are pursuing you, you run into an embassy. That's the end of it. They can't go in. It's Ecuador, not Chile, please. I stand corrected. Thank you very much for that. Thank you very, very much for that. The name Ecuador uh, skipped my brain. Thank you very, very much for that. A lot of people are calling in to say, um, I don't want it. Don't call, please, no distraction. No distraction, please. And to tell the message you're in, which your pastors will never preach about. Remember the man called Mal uh, Magu? You remember what I said about it? A while ago, I told them, I have not, I don't want to, just, what is happening now is nothing. They are still holding on the sanity. And I told them, the more you hold on the sanity, the more mess you be in. Now, USA has opened investigation into Funtua and the rest of them. And now, Magu is in trouble as well. And I, I remember telling you live on air that Magu of EFCC is a thief. I said, my justification for calling for the release of all those of Kyle and Elizabeth is because those that claim they are prosecuting, they are thieves themselves. I told you live on air. Here. And now what has happened? Malami is now writing to the presidency because nobody is there. Nobody can move Magu now. How can I move him? That's not president. He says that, listen to this, the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of, of Justice, Mr. Vata Malami, has recommended to whoever they are calling Buhari, I don't know who the person is, to sack Magu of EFCC. What did Magu do? He was diverting funds, which means looting the loot, looting the loot, and also insubordination. EFCC, my group, a full animal is a thief, is a criminal, is a robber. But he put Olisamitu in jail. Put all Joseph Kalu in jail. Thank you, Joseph Kalu is out. And Olisamitu must come out. This is only the beginning. It's not for two hours. By the time we are done with the full animal caliphate or emirate, some of you will go to the US again. All your assets will be frozen. I told you, that executive board that has Trump signed, you don't know what it means. Some of you don't, because of course we don't read. How can we know? We don't read. Tomorrow somebody will tell me, oh, you're trying to value uh, uh, Caucasians over black people because we have failed to reason. And because we have failed to reason, there is no way I'm going to support evil. It's not possible. And uh, you, you, when you are in a country where somebody who scores two out of 150, they call you. And they are made president. Somebody who scored 138. They say you are part of the 5%. You will not even appoint you. We will not even consider you. And you are in that country. And you are supporting that country. How do you want me to describe you? How, I ask you, how do you want me to describe you? That, the list has come out. Uh, 
you be like Southern Sudan. I tell you, yes, no. May we be, may Biafra be like Southern Sudan because today Southern Sudan is the fastest growing economy in the whole of Africa. The fastest growing economy in Africa. The fastest growing economy in Africa is South Sudan because they are free from the danger wheel of the north. And you say, everyone, what we want is a structure of Nigeria. Oh, we are every talking rock people, rubbish. Nonsense. We are going. Elohim Chuko Bikadema has broken this. What do you, what has one God to do for you? Is it God to come and uh, do a miracle and the uh, buildings will come out and uh, Biafra independence will be there? I've given an example with Jericho, the fall of the wall of Jericho. Elohim says, just walk around the wall seven times. That's all. I'm asking you, you're not going to walk around that rock seven times, so, with your uh, two feet, no? Go to Twitter. We need millions of people on Twitter. And then you see how we're going to collapse this week. Just overnight. Because there's nobody there. There is nobody there. There is no there is no Buhari. There is no Sibajo. There is no Buddha. There is nobody there. You do as you like. Don't you know that? It's not the end of this week. The people holding Nigeria are Yoruba Muslims who are intimidating the Yoruba Christians to align with their fellow uh, uh, brotherhood in the in the north. We have a, a, a pig somewhere, uh, you know, with his, uh, you know, snouts in the trough, you know, a pig. That's all. So that one is free. We are on our own. We have some traitors that is true. We have, or an entity has been established as a, as a traitor group of, 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 how can I describe them? I have no words to describe them. The day they are evil will make bare for all to see that day you will know that these men are, <laughs> they don't deserve to live. I'm telling you the truth. Because of them, that is why when your mother goes to the farm, they rape her. You know, some, some of our, your mother won't say that she be raped. If our mothers tell us what they encounter in the farms every blessed day, then you will know. Understand that very well. South Sudan, number one. Rwanda, number two. Ivory Coast, number three. Cote d'Ivoire, number three. Number four is, uh, is uh, Ethiopia. Number five is Senegal. Six is Bena Republic. Seven is Uganda. Eight is Kenya. Nine is Mozambique. Ten is, uh, is, uh, is Niger. Uh, Niger, uh, Niger. Niger, anyway. Burkina Faso is number eleven. There is no zoo. A Fulani woman that went to school with only two is in charge of your finance and you want to be considered as a developing country you are insane it never happened no president either your pastor will not tell me about this because let me tell you the truth no amount of Holy Ghost fire can give you a job the world is not like that no amount of Holy Ghost fire or quoting of the Bible can give you accommodation you can stand on the road, that your first old road, and pray, and uh, 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 I don't know, call down fire from a mountain. That road will never be built. <laughs> your pastors should tell you the truth. It is governments that create the enabling environment that allows jobs to be created. I will teach this do something. You see the railways that are building all over the zoo, apart from Japan. I was the person that gave them the idea when I was in detention at DSS. I gave them the idea to build railways. Me, now the canon. I told the Nigerian government to go and build railways. I told them. They were wondering how they can create employment. I gave them the idea personally, I gave it to them. But let me give them another advice. Maybe that too corrupt, they will not be able to understand or implement it. It is called, I've, I've preached it before, political economy. Political economy is the marriage of political and economics. Now ask yourself, how did China become a major power in the whole world with so many entrepreneurs, billions of them? 
Are you thinking that all those people they just transmitted from communism into capitalism overnight? Where did they get the capital from? That is the key thing as an entrepreneur. Where do you intend to get your initial capital from? In a country that is just emerging, what you need to do is you go through the phase of your development called the political economic phase where the political aspirations match the economic potentials of that very nation. You marry the two together. In other words, you find the government financing capital projects and those capital projects are built by the companies in that very country so that the money circulates. That is why in China you have Chinese firms, engineering firms, building skyscrapers, building roads, building bridges, building railways, building sewer systems. So the money stays within. Unlike the zoo, where you graduate nearly 10,000 engineers every year, but Julius Berger, a German firm, has a contract for life. Do you understand? So, even your engineers do not have the opportunity to learn to improve on their skills. They end up driving Kekana Pep. Do you see how we have turned life upside down? The meaning of life does no longer exist. It doesn't exist anymore. That's how foolish we are. That was why people are now beginning to realize that after all, it's empty. Your daddy GO, oh, they know about this, they will, not utter, they will never ever utter any word. Because, believe it or not, some of these pastors, I said some of these pastors, they depend on corruption in the false federation of Nigeria to continue living large, buying aircraft at their own expense. Let me tell you one thing you don't know. If we do the world, we have to become free today. Every mega Yoruba church will collapse. Do you know why? People will focus all their energies on developing the land for everybody. And once people realize that prayer and fasting alone cannot give you a job, prayer and fasting cannot give you a house, prayer and fasting can never ever in your life give you a good road, they will abandon them. So for all these corrupt pastors to remain relevant, they need corruption in Nigeria and they need the broken system of Nigeria to remain in place. Simple logic. Simple logic. Because are you telling me people will be free if if or do the world have to be free today or gather to be free, you will have to go to church. We'll be we'll work twenty four hours a day. We'll be working every day we will we'll go to work. And then only then will you realize that the knowledge of God is a personal encounter. Not something that somebody will tell you about. It's personal. Very, very personal. Very, very personal. Why should a man of God, I ask you, why should a man of God be afraid to stand up to say that the demolition of the Nigerian embassy in Ghana is an affront? An affront. But people will look at it, they don't, I don't know where, but they are all graduates. So, some of them have PhD. Can't, somebody will, can't you sit down and ask yourself, why would a, a should I say, a restricted area uh, be breached? Not only that, and the buildings destroyed. Why? And the president of the country affected hasn't said anything. She may can never know my body. What sort of human what sort of human beings are, are you people? What sort of human beings are what sort of human beings are you people? What sort of human beings I ask are you people? I don't understand it. I just don't understand it and I will never understand it until everybody begins to reason like a human being. Until we begin to reason like a like human beings, I'm telling you. We right now we don't. We do not reason like human beings, we don't. I tell you, it's distressful and very shameful. Somebody wrote to me and said, please, try to be kind. There are many people that want to listen to you. But you insult people a lot. His name is Victor Linus. I read every comment on my page. Actually, I do. It's Victor Linus. 
He wrote and he said, Master Nam the Kano, please, we want you to speak politely. We want you to be to be ruthless and insultless tomorrow. He was writing yesterday. Remember that thousands of people are watching you. <laughs> I thought I would have said millions of people are watching. Say thousands are watching you. Try to be polite. And I made myself a promise to this man called Victor Linus for actually writing. I said, I will be polite. But before I came on air, they had killed a woman and spread her body parts all over the place in Biafra land. Our mothers can no longer go to the farm. The zoo embassy in Ghana demolished. No speech from the president. No one is saying anything. Instead of the president, you have now the presidency. Uh, the uh, head of EFCC uh, indicted. Everybody can loot and steal as they wish. Why won't I insult those who are tolerating such intolerable behavior? That, that's what I'm asking. So you see, Victor Lyons, it's not my fault. As long as we continue to be stupid and foolish, it is my duty to continue to call out our people because anything you do that is foolish, I will tell the whole world. Because this is the reason why we are still undeveloped. There was something that I came across and I was shocked. I was shocked. I posted this, that was two days ago. So yesterday, actually, I did. Let me drink some water. I posted something on my page about Papua New Guinea, how they are treating black people there. Something struck me. Why is it all over the world eh? where people are suffering is always black people? Why? And then it came back to what I used to say all the time. The way we are reading is fraud. That is number one. And number two, Africa is nothing to write home about. Black Africa is a disgrace. And as long as black Africa is a disgrace, black people will continue to be disgraced all over the whole world. And Africa will remain in darkness until the life that is Biafra is allowed or is switched on, more or less. Until Biafra is switched on by virtue of independence, Africa will continue to dwell in darkness. And every black person anywhere in the world is a fair game. People can do to them whatever they like. Why am I saying this? Because even in Iraq, and you believe that, black Iraqis, there are black people in Iraq as well. And they are suffering. I want it posted, please. The community, black people in Iraq, these are Iraqis though, they are black, of whom Many are descendants of African, uh, African slaves. We saw them also to Iraq, as I told you before. Arabs came, they bought us. Europeans came, they bought us. Arabs that came to buy us brought Islam to us. We swallowed it hook, line, and sinker as the uh, blacks we yeah. are. The Europeans, after buying us, uh, uh, taking us uh, on the cheap, they gave us Christianity as compensation. <laughs> that is why today you have a community of black people descendants of slaves they are in Iraq and they are crying also they said what happened to Floyd George Floyd has taught them a lesson that they too are suffering in Iraq Iraq of all places there are blacks there how did they get there through slavery and who sold them fellow black people in Africa. And you want God to love you. That is why that Bible you're carrying, sometimes you're wasting your time. What God wants you to do, you have not done it. True repentance can only come by setting the children of God free. Until that happens, your daddy G.O. will never speak out against the evil happening. Because he is a direct beneficiary. He is benefiting from the corruption in Nigeria. Without corruption, how are you going to have mega churches? How? People go to church because they are suffering. People are in pain. There is hunger and poverty. So they have to go down here to look for a miracle. When you are comfortable and you are very wealthy, are you looking for a miracle? Then, only then can you worship God. 
with clarity of mind and a sense of purpose. Not when you are hungry. You do everything to survive. If they don't give me that hundred naira you have now, so that God will bless you tomorrow, you have for tomorrow, you will give the person immediately. That is why they preach prosperity. They don't preach salvation. They preach prosperity. Like God said, God multiply you, I'll give you all the riches. And they are flying in their private aircraft. And you can't even go to the farm to go and harvest cassava, to fry garlic, to sell, to pay the tithes for next week. And if you give them, they will take. They see all this evil happening, they say nothing. I am saying it now and I will keep saying it. We black people, we need to apologize for our role in slavery. We started the selling of people. We did. Africans did. Africans must apologize. Not Europeans or Americans. So in our next life, we will learn how to value life. I have shown it to you in the book of Exodus. 21.16 The day we started telling people through the coastal region of Biafra land, through the Jordan land, started telling them, that was the day that God said bye bye to Africa. That you people are evil. You are the only people in the history of humanity to commercialize the sale of your own people. In the history of the whole world. <laughs> I want God to against your way against the word of God. I want God to love you. I, I think you're, 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 some people are insane. You don't know God. That means some of you don't know God. You don't know. You don't know the God you came to worship. You know Him. You don't. You have no idea who He is and how He operates. He gave you a commandment. Do not, do not spare anybody. He's here in Exodus. If you spare, your punishment is death. I will not die today for selling our people. To, to Arabs and, to, and to, to Europeans. And you still have the temerity to get up and to say black life matters. Matters to who? To you that sold them. Have you repented in Africa? You that sold them from Africa, have you repented? Have you repented yourself? You have not. You are still selling them. The, re the only reason why you are not selling us now is because there is nobody to buy. Um, I'm so sorry, in fact, we are, we are still being sold in Libya. I would have been sold in Libya. Where is this your moral, where is this your righteous indignation? Where is it? How come you're not morally outraged about what is happening in Libya? Blacks are being sold in Libya right now, right this very second. What have you done as a black man or a black woman? Why have you done nothing? You've done nothing. You want to go and pray and fast so God will bless you as He blessed your neighbor without going to work, without investing your money. Let me, let me tell you something. Let me help grow the zoo economy. That money you pay as tithe every week, go and invest it in the Lagos Stock Exchange. Put that money there and after one year you go back and you see, that is correct blessing, you see it before your eyes. You will see God blessing you immediately. All the money you give to your daddy G.O. to buy a jet, how did, you, how did you benefit from it? All the money you give to daddy G.O. to go and buy private jets and build mansions, how did you benefit? The money you give to IPOB, we are fighting for Biafra, and Biafra will come, you will see it. That is what is getting you. The money you give to the GO, what is it going to get for you? Unless you are telling me that to get into the kingdom of heaven, you need to buy your way through. Is that it? Of course, the people are complaining that my the Facebook is cracking very seriously. Of course, it will crack. It will crack. Let us Stop the let us <laughs> please go to YouTube and you go to to I don't know if Radio Biafra is stable. I don't know if Radio Biafra Live is stable. Radio Biafra is stable. I think it is stable. My page is under tremendous attack. Heavy, heavy <laughs> heavy attack. We are going to come out of it and then restart it all over again. All over again on Facebook, please. Try to bear with us. We are going back. <laughs> they can't handle this gospel, can they? It's your Kuchineke. It's your Kuchineke. They cannot handle it. They can't. 
How can they handle it? It is impossible. They can't. <laughs> because they are, they are criminals. They are criminals. They are criminals. They cannot handle it. They can't handle it. We are going back live on my page, of course. We are going back live on my page. We are going back live on my page. We are back again live on my page. On Facebook, I'm not the number channel. The whole world is listening. The time now is precisely, I think, in the blessed land of Biafra, it is 9 p.m. 9 p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra. I think they have shut the whole thing down altogether. Anyway, I think they have shut it down. <laughs> I don't think. Uh, they don't want me to broadcast on my page anymore. Oh, nothing. They are coming back now. <laughs> they are coming back. <laughs> oh, dear. Zoo. Zoo. And, and they are your best head. Sidekicks. <laughs> Radio Biafra is very clear. They are saying, somebody, Amy Patrick said I should continue. Yes. Uh, yes. Abanejie. Yes, they said I should continue. Radio Biafra is loud and clear. So Radio Biafra is okay then. It's okay. That's very good. Then we are back again on my page. We are back again on my page. And I don't even know. Now they are not even showing me how many people who are listening. They can't even tell me how many who are listening. That is how terrible it is. They are panicking. They are panicking. They are panicking. Because they have lost it. They have lost it. They have lost it. And we have won as usual. The whole world is this what under panicking. They are blacks in Iraq, they are suffering for the blacks in Iraq. And who is responsible for the suffering of black people in Iraq? Africans that sold them, please, not Arabs. Africans that sold Africans into slavery should be ashamed of themselves. They should be ashamed of themselves. They are ashamed of themselves. Everywhere else is very clear, apart from my pain. <laughs> then we must continue to preach. As in him has the Holy Ghost. We must preach this very gospel. Now there was a man that attempted to speak. And I keep asking, why are you silent? I asked the pastors, the religious leaders, those that claim that traditional rulers, why I, how come all of a sudden the Sultan of Sokoto is no longer Sultan of Sokoto, you no longer speak? You no longer talk. One tried to speak and he said <laughs> that uh, Buhari is not active anymore. Uh, that is a is a is a uh, pastor Ayo Hele. Instead of him to come out as a man of God, he said Buhari is no longer alive. He said Buhari is no longer active, and we accept. And he said that the government will meet a greater challenge from IPOB. And I'm saying, of course, they will. 2020, hey, they will. Oh, they must. They must. And and I'm trying to live this year. This year, what am I doing in the zoo? What am I doing in the zoo? Um, I keep asking, what am I doing in the zoo? They brought that one idiot to say uh, that, um, uh, 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 start, start, you know, at least as I wrote, we have cured them of the disease of Niger Delta. Darkness inside darkness. And that is why the waters of the Niger Delta, as they, they used to call themselves, is black, polluted, and very filthy. Because you said you are Niger Delta, which is black darkness and a delta of darkness inside Nigeria, which is darkness itself. Double darkness, only you. And you want to be developed. You have cursed yourself already. Now they have run to South South. Now this uh, Pastor Yodele is telling you that um, the zoo is being on a time bomb. Why would it be on a time bomb? Why not, I ask. Of course it would be on a time bomb. Why shouldn't it be? The question about money if we are going home this year. Oh, the zoo. <laughs> anyway, let me not say much. I will continue to focus my lectures on these critical areas. Given that it has come to our understanding that the root of all the problems associated with the shameful plight of a black man, or should I say black people all around the world, stems from it is coming from our subconscious ignorance. A black man is ignorant, subconsciously is ignorant of the facts of life. And what they have done is to wrap this very cleverly in this religion. They, they, they put it in religion, they wrap it. And that completes your stupidity. 
they take something and they wrap it in religion. That completes your idiocy. Religion cannot give us anything in life. It can only give you the grace of God. It cannot give you anything. Religion cannot give you nothing. Absolutely nothing. Only grace of God can. And grace of God is not the same thing as religion. There are people who don't go to church. They don't go to synagogue. They don't go to the mosque. And they are holy. Holier than those that go to all these places. If you don't know, let me tell you. We must continue. We need to continue. And as I said earlier, I want to substat- I want to crystallize, I want to substantiate the assertion I made earlier. I want to make it abundantly clear. They are hacking and attacking my page, my goodness me. Listen very carefully, please. Church of England and Bank of England apologize for historic slavery links. Anglican Church is saying today that the fact that they doubled into slavery is a source of shame. Anglican Church. <laughs> we are some of us, we are baptized in. <laughs> as soon as they stop to buy slaves to sell and make money, <laughs> They told me Jesus is Lord. <laughs> I, hey, Mr. G, black people, may the good Lord have mercy on us. <laughs> hey, no wonder they call us nigger, call us everything. Will you get us to the background? Everything horrible they do to us. And they get away with it. A whole church of God. <laughs> In that same, <laughs> they come with the Bible, no? mind you. They brought good news, Bible, the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And what is the Bible? The Bible comprises of the Old and the New Testament. And these people, these Europeans that brought us this Bible, inside that same Bible, in the book of Exodus 21, 16, Deuteronomy 24, 7, the same Bible they gave, they gave us when they came, that Bible said, you should not sell anybody. It's in the Bible. Because once you're a Christian, automatically you follow the ways of Jesus Christ and then you're a Jew. That's what it means. You practice the religion of Moses. The same way that Islam, to an extent, practices the religion of Moses. Till tomorrow morning. That's what it means. That Bible that they brought, I said the Bible, you remember we used to talk about the good news. This good news we are bringing you salvation through Jesus. Nobody is doubting that. But inside that Bible it says you should not buy or sell anybody. After buying us and selling us and making money out of us and building beautiful cathedrals, beautiful churches, beautiful roads and cities with our bones and our flesh and our blood. They said to us that uh, the road to salvation Politically and economically lies in the Bible, which is a lie. <laughs> a big lie, of course, it's a lie. <laughs> Today, the church is apologizing. Church of England is apologizing. The church, we are some of us, we are baptized, is apologizing for dehumanizing us as a race. Do you see where I have a problem with the brain of black people? It is not one priest or two. As, as it was with the Roman Catholicism and pedophilia. Not one or two. The whole church sat down, maybe did their synod meeting, and decided it will be economically viable for the church of Jesus Christ, of Anglican Communion, to go and start selling fellow human beings from Africa to make money a church. And as they were selling it, they were establishing their parsonages, establishing their churches, telling us the brothers good news. <laughs> ah, black people. And this G. Black! Black! <laughs> ah, God, it happened. Oh, they have a church of England, which is Anglican Church, Anglican Communion. Apologize for their historic links to slavery. We are ashamed, so says the church. We are ashamed. 
or do something that God said you shouldn't do. And that thing was contained in the same Bible you brought to us to say this is good news from Jesus. And that good news from Jesus, Jesus said you shouldn't sell your fellow human beings. And you did. You made money from it. And after, I don't know, maybe a hundred and um, thirty years, you're not apologizing. <laughs> and we are still going to those churches. <laughs> this is black. <coughs> if you want to debate anything I've said, do you debate me? Don't hide behind your foolishness and ignorance to talk crap. Debate me! So I can swallow your life with facts and figures. I'm ashamed, honestly speaking. When I tell you that the problem we have is in our brain, now you can understand it. So all these years, we've not even read the Bible very well. That's what it means. Now, for it's only now that the church of Anglican Church is now saying, please forgive us. And I expect the Catholic Church to do the same. It was a Pope who announced slavery. A Pope of Catholic Church who announced it. It is the truth. Historical fact. That is what I preach. Historical. Take your useless sentiment to the grave. I don't give a damn. I preach the truth. Here is a good Disprove me based on the points that I raise. Not on your stupid village African sentiment. Have no time for that rubbish. Did Anglican church dabble into slavery or not? The answer is yes. Was slavery not condemned by God in the Bible? Yes. Some would tell me, uh, but the Bible said, be loyal to your slave, be loyal to your master. I said, it's because you're a black African man, you have no sense of reasoning. Do you know what is called Ibo Dibo? Have you heard about that before? Apprenticeship. That is what the Bible meant by uh, an apprentice, be loyal to your master, not slave. Not slave. I don't know where these dumb people are coming from. Not where they coming from. Ibo, Ibo, Ogu. That is why you have a my master or my lord. When you go to a when you go to a area, and you are doing apprenticeship, it's Ibo, Ogu. That's what we call it. To be a slave, it can be translated into slavery. It doesn't mean literally you are the person's property, no. It means you are serving a master. That's why you call somebody my Lord. It doesn't mean that Lord in heaven. It means somebody you serve. That's the meaning of it. Some of us, we go to school, we don't even understand the... So that I, won't call it, I won't use the word my initial. No one's loving this language. We don't know it. We don't know it. But we are all intellectuals, aren't we? We are all intellectuals. I don't know what is happening. They are panicking. I don't know... Maybe they have shut down my page. I have no idea. The gospel is too hot, they cannot handle it. Darkness is fleeing. The gospel have also, they cannot handle it. The children of perdition, the offsprings of Lucifer cannot handle this gospel this evening. It's too hot for them. It's so good, Jack. They prove me on the facts, not your stupid sentiments. Not doing anything with it. I want facts. Biasa will be run on facts and figures. For your information. We are the ones fighting for Christianity. I am the one fighting for Christianity. I am fighting for Christianity. Me. Our forefathers, as I wrote very convincingly, never our ancestors were never afraid of any subject. Never! Everything was discussed in the open. Oh, oh, don't discuss religion! It's a, then you are not prepared for Biafra then. That's what it means. You are not ready for Biafra. Am I asking you not to believe in the nonsense that you believe in? Did I stop anybody from believing in whatever thing that you believe in? I am an evil man. An evil Biafra. And I grew up in the village. Not all this when I grew up in the township that know nothing. 
I grew up in the village. Oh, yeah, I see you and this between you and your God. Sometimes when you do something, they will say, Oh, can you not see that you are with me? That's the agreement between you and your God. Even your mother will tell you that. Sometimes the mother will lose a child. And you see people coming to console the mother, and the mother will say, That was the decision my child reached with his God. Some of you did not grow up in the village, so you don't know any of these things. You have no idea what they are. Spirituality in the township is different though, from the one we got in the village. Very, very different, I tell you. After now, you know. That is the decision he reached with God. Even your mother will say it. Which means that everybody, spirituality and the knowledge of, and the knowledge of God is a personal thing. It is not a group thing. It is personal between you and your God. That is why somebody can come out and go to the final shrine and destroy it and take a new one. Uh, now, now we start with, oh, God, this was the of the oh, God. That was how they deceived you. That was why for nearly 300 years, you never knew, it never occurred to you that slavery is in the Bible. That God said no to slavery. Even the person that brought the Bible to you, he, um, he knew he was there because they wrote it. They gave it to you. Open the words. Oh, salvation has come from Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is salvation, yes. Of course, we know that. But then they never showed you why he said that what the English were doing was wrong. What the Southern Anglican Church was doing is wrong. You give us Bible with one hand, you take us as slaves with another hand. Now you apologize. These are the people. Have people not debated religion? Do you think Anglican Church would apologize? Had people not debated religion? Do you think that all those pedophiles in the Catholic Church would have confessed? Do you know how much the Catholic Church paid in compensation? Google it. So if they say no, 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 don't discuss religion. So that means you are now allowing pedophiles to molest our children. Because uh, nobody discuss religion. Who told who told you that in Piafaland? Who 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 gave that to you? Everything will be discussed. In their everything in their everything will be discussed. We cannot hide under superstition and ignorance to talk rubbish. In Biafra land, everything will be out in the open. That is the type of control we want to run. For your information. For your information. You can believe in whatever thing you want to believe in. That is your business. That is your business. But I'm just giving you the facts. That, that the religion that you claim you believe in came through slavery. They took your slaves. For your information, go and read it. Read up on it for your information. In my village, they have a of one more. There are women who stay by the river. They worship the goddess in the river. There are some houses you go to see a woman who draws snake on the wall. Does that make them a less of a human being? No. That is who they want to worship. That is their business. Don't impose it on me. I won't impose mine on you. Don't impose yours on me. That's all. Oh, yeah, I see that. I don't know how many times I will explain this all the time. Onye Nachiya, for your information. You go to church and you hand over your, 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 your hard earned money to somebody to come buy a private jet. Are you, are you not insane? Are you not an idiot? In the name of paying tithe. Are you, are you, are you, are you not a complete idiot? I'm going to bring politics. You want to share from the politics? How many, how many did your pastor bring to you? How many pastors share politics? I'm asking you. How many share it? I spent 50 million. How many of the pastors share politics? I'm asking you. Don't buy the money yet now. And the, the gates of heaven will open for you. And you walk in mad. <laughs> Black people everywhere. Do you know the funniest thing? Even can Christian Association of Nigeria, they don't have ordinary, ordinary Twitter handle. Can. So all the killings being done is nothing. They depend on newspapers writing um, 
they are statements for them. As, I, as we are suffering, IPOB is suffering, spending over hundred thousand dollars every month, fighting the Satan that is due, fighting for the lives of Christians. I have published letters that I wrote many times to Trump and to Pompeo that prompted them, in fact, in line with uh, no, there are people, other people who are working. Let me pray that way, please, before they start complaining tomorrow. I said, I'm the candle to glory for, for something. I write, go to my Twitter handle, you will see Christianity. I, every blessed day, I fight for Christians. Every day. You are a Christian, and you on Twitter. How many times have you tweeted a new world power to say, Christians are dying? Are you on Twitter backing you? A whole Christian association of Nigeria is not on Twitter. I'm the one that tweets for them. And people are dying, they cannot do anything about it. They cannot do anything about it. That is how how dark some of them are. There are good men, of course. There are good men of God. I'm not I'm not saying that if I think Coca Coca also spoke again, uh, was it yesterday or today? He says that spoken, I said it. That spoken. Bishop Coca, the Catholic Bishop of Sokoda. Hassan Coca. Very outspoken. He spoke again yesterday. I like him. He speaks out. Most of the most of the priests that have to be a party tomorrow, they are Catholics. Most from Ireland. I like them. I respect them. It doesn't mean if I say something wrong, I will say it. Please. Please. Alleged Christian, let me remind all of you, and I want to post it. Alleged Christian persecution. Presidency accuses IPOB of misleading the United States and the United Kingdom. Not Christian, not can. IPOB. IPOB. The presidency of the zoo is that because we did a lot of work. And I'm still on going till now. And some idiots will rise up and stupidly and ignorantly try to accuse us of being anti-Christian because they are foolish. Very, very foolish people. Foolish. What I have done for Christians in Nigeria, all the bishops put together have not done half of it. And can never do not a billion years. Over a hundred thousand dollars every month. And instead of some of you to be grateful, you are busy talking rubbish. See if you are insane. Who is fighting for Christians if not IPOB? Who is fighting for Christians if not IPO on a consistent basis? Because you people are you are black people, you fight for one week and you give up. Why are you not on, 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 on Twitter? Because you cannot post selfie on Twitter. You see it on the serious platform. Are you on Twitter? So you don't know that you can reach world heads of state by Twitter. You don't know that? Oh, goodness me. When the zoo presidency says IPOB is carrying this Christian matter on their head and lobbying governments of the world. Some of you did not say it. You didn't say it, did you? We are spending our hard-earned money to try to make your lives better, to keep you safe in the zoo, and you're not grateful. You cannot be grateful. Something that your daddy Joe has never done, I can never do. Are you telling me that Adebo, you any of this, who can bring out $100,000 a month to lobby, to fight for you? I'm asking all the Christians in this room, God, Nigeria, tell me the church that will bring out a hundred thousand every month to lobby and to fight for Christians. How many of you will do it? IPB does it every month. Yet you're not grateful. To people, black people, ungrateful people, a country of hypocrites. That was the, all your so called daddy Gigos, they were there, and IPOB was proscribed as a terrorist organization. Yes, you all of you were there. Did you say anything? Did you do anything? No. Maybe Mietia is killing. Mietia is everywhere killing. Maybe modern people. They are not a terrorist group. But help you be. Because light is in us and there is darkness in most of you. Darkness. Most of you. And 
and you're afraid of the truth. I will tell you the truth. Look at the money reported by New York Times. Ordinary man in Bamako, in Mali, on Friday, people came out asking for the president to resign. They bought it off. But in the zoo, can you do it? I want to ask, I want to pose a very simple question to Christians in the zoo. Simple question. What do you think would happen if all of you were to come out tomorrow morning? All the daddy GOs in the zoo called Nigeria were to come out tomorrow morning and to say, Enough is enough. Let everybody go on the streets and protest. The zoo will come to an end. And your life will be better. But they will never do it. They will never ever do it. Do you know why? Because your daddy G.O. benefits from corruption. Because the, the reason why they get tight from you is because you are poor. Mentally poor. That is why they do that. Our problem is numerous of black people. This is Togo. I want to use Togo as an example. This is Togo. 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 Togo is a very fine example of the, the death. I do promise uh, Libinos that uh, after today, of course, things will be different from Wednesday onwards. I want, I will encourage our people, black people all over the world. I will encourage them. Let me do that thing that some of them say I should do. But for tonight, I must say the truth. Look at Togo. Do you know that Togo was once a friend, sorry, a German colony? Germany used to own Togo. They used to, to speak German as the lingua franca. And in 1945, after the war, they used to Togo to compensate France. In 1945, they were handed over like a panapara, handed them over like a prostitute, over to, uh, to France. Their lingua franca is now French. <laughs> Hey, black people, black, black. And I'm telling you, if the world decides tomorrow to hand them over to, to Sweden, they will be Swedish. Only in Africa. And when you challenge them and say to them, the reason why they can hand you over like a parcel from what is because of the way you reason, they don't understand it. They think you hate them. They think you hate Christianity. I'm telling a black man, the way you reason is flawed. To be an example of the hopelessness of a black man. Before it was uh, German, now it is French. Are we, are we okay at all? Oh dear me, unbelievable. And if, oh wait, 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 we're not the same one. We are from South South. I'm from East West and uh, South South South. That's why the fact it has no meaning. Somebody I was discussing with Jonas and he reminded me of something very important. Those who want to say, oh, I asked somebody, why do you want a, an evil nation alone? He said, no, oh, uh, everybody can ask evil. Why do they speak evil only? So we can be evil people, just one. And I asked him, let us count. I asked him to start. He said, nah. And then he ran up something. It's still one, the, the figure one. In our county, in for Igbo Biafra zone, the same one on one is called Nge. It is called Oj. It is called Na. It's called Ufu. The same one. On. So does it mean that all the people that call one Nge or Na, they are not the same people? <laughs> they, are, they, are, they are different. One is from Benin. The other one is from uh, is from uh, uh, Adwaite. Uh, in the back we say Nge. And Nungwa they say go to Na. Na. So does it mean Nungwa people are from the, maybe they come from, from, uh, from Jukun. <laughs> Do you see how free some are? That language is not the determining factor of us to who you are. For us, if your mother ties to peace rapper, you're one of us. Because culturally we are affiliated. We have cultural affinity. That's the case maybe. We, we we live in in a space where in the zoo where historians deny us history. I, and there was a time that my friend 
Tell me, Fadika, you already wrote something about. I've, I've been having sleepless nights. I've not told anyone. I've not even told him. You wrote something about um, <laughs> Yoruba. Not the idea of not being Yoruba, but it's um, Oduduwa. It's been on my mind. And I've been researching. You know, we, we read a lot. I've been researching. And I stumbled upon an old Biafran map. And it was very, very. <laughs> I don't know, it was an eye opener to be honest with you. And I, I give it to them. Uh, I, I would say that some people know, since uh, Fanaka knows, maybe some other people will know. But I'm sure that most of the thieving pastors you have in you know, one land, they do not know this either. I even read some pieces where some people attacked, attacked um, Fanaka because of it. Said, oh, you know, what, you, know, you know, in the zoo, when you're educated in the zoo, you reason backwards. When somebody makes a very serious allegation or advances a hypothesis, your job is to go and investigate before you start allowing your emotions to run wild and crazy. Fanica said that um, Yoruba doesn't exist. Is a is an insult, it's an insulting word like uh, Nyamri. I know the funniest thing, it is true. I looked at this Biaf this um, African map, old map. I can see Biafra very clearly on the eastern flank. And very close to the north of, uh, the north of Kwa State, you have the Yaliba. This is the first time I'm seeing Yoruba on a map. But it's not called Yoruba, it's called Yaliba. Y A R R I B A. But Biafra was spelled correctly. Even Benin was spelled correctly with Benin. B E N I N. Zaria was spelled correctly. Kanu was spelled correctly. It's only Katsina they call Katsina. Maybe it's the Katsina is the emphasization. Maybe this, this is the correct one. Every name was correct. Dahome was spelled correctly. Even Abome was spelled correctly. Ivory Coast was spelled, but Yoruba was spelled in Yariba. And very close to the north. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And that is the first time that I'm seeing it. And I did a bit more research and I discovered that it is actually true that the Europeans, according to this very man, they called Johnson, the history of the Yoruba, they wrote in 1897. That the Europeans, when they encountered Hausa, no, yeah, Hausa people, they said they described the Yorubas as Yariba people, people who are untrustworthy. And the Yorubas did not change the name, they retained it. We changed, we said not ours. They said we were called Magogi. You cannot see uh, an Arab as a Magogi or our area is now known as Abogi. No. They gave us Nyamri, we said no. Is that our name? We are Igbo or we are Biafra. Call us anything you like, but not Nyamri. They called the Yorubas Yariba. Untrustworthy, unreliable people, and the Yoruba has accepted it. Do you know why they accepted it? Because of the disproportionate influence of Yoruba Muslim in the lives of Oduduwa people. I told you, anything comes from so-called caliphate. Oduduwa Muslims who swallow it hook, line, and sinker. That's what happened. They lost their name. They now they are now answering the names of those who conquered them in the Lorraine. And another thing is quite interesting, you know, it's quite um, astonishing, is the, is the predominance of, of Bini Kingdom throughout this era. Predominance of Bini Kingdom. And the Yorubas were actually called, sorry, the Duduwas are called Yariba and they accepted it. Just like um, Niger Delta, a place of darkness inside darkness. This one, uh, Yariba, meaning dubious people, and accepted it. And as I told you, your name will always follow you. And what is happening today? <laughs> anyway, that is the story for another day. But um, Yoruba has no meaning. 
is your Zodua, is your name. I have this map. Please, can you publish it? So they can see it. Her name is Yariba. It's a very, very uncomfortable name to bear, to be honest with you. Very sad indeed. Oduduwa children should rise up and from today we refer to them as Oduduwa people, not Yoruba anymore, please. Because Yoruba doesn't exist. It was a it was a very terrible name given to them by Fulani people. Please. Their name is Oduduwa. They are the sons and daughters of Oduduwa. They are not Yariba. Yariba is a derogatory name, please. It is here and the map is here. Yariba. So funny Kaido was right. Y A R R I B A. It's here in the map. Please can publish it. So the world may know. It is free lesson that we give them here. We teach you history here for free. For free. The Janjaweeds are preparing to fight us. They are preparing to go to war. Our daughters are being cut into pieces and put everywhere. As usual as we expect them to be. Biafans in America are sleeping. In the next 2,000 years, when they have no home, they will start looking for somebody to apologize to them. Now they have a chance to make headway. They are not taking that opportunity. We must warn them. The defense of Biafra land will be done under one command. Not to, not to all these stupid DDOs, the criminals are advocating for separate village, village vigilante. That's how free they are. They saw all that the little white people they had on the room. Under one command. The full army terrorists have one command, Mietiana. One command. But you see, they claim they went to school. They claim they educated. When it comes to us, they want every village they have. If you have two double barriers, if you have uh, one gun, gun, uh, organize yourself, village by village, uh, uh, I vigilante. This is how they did. They claim they went to school. That is not what we want. Even the vigilante in the villages are all IPOB anyway. Everybody is IPOB for information. And we are under one central indisputable command which I lead. One command the whole world over. One command. All that your useless no, autonomous rubbish doesn't apply. After we defeat our enemies, we can now go to our tents or Israel. But for now, under one command. That is how you beat the enemy. Do you understand it? All of you idiots in Abuja running around with your with your big red, black and blue looking for for somebody to, to write petition for so you can get money. Go back to your useless unemployment and leave the matters of state to those who know it. Statecraft is not meant for gossipers and idle minds. We are on something very big. Only one command, please. All these people advocating, going through town unions. Are they not the same town unions that gave our land to Yet Yala? Not the same people? The same as the general and the same a, a traditional ruler? The same people. For your information, please. We have gone past that era of nonsense. We have decided to move on. And that moving on entails us doing that which is right before God in heaven and man on this very earth. We have come very close to the end of our proceedings today. And for those of you petitioning me and saying that I should be nice to black people, from Wednesday I will be. And let me see if you have changed sufficiently. If you have not changed, I will return to this style of broadcast. If you don't know. But from Wednesday I will give you a chance. I will praise you and I will explain to do that worthy of somebody who is on that praise, so to speak. But wherever you are, whatever thing you are worshipping is entirely up to you. Biafra will be a secular state by the foundation that you don't see will be anchored on the Ten Commandments of the Most High. Biafra is a godly nation. It is the kingdom of God on the face of this very earth. We cannot deny that. We cannot deny that. And the Ten Commandments will guide us always. Always, always. Without, I said always, without fail. And you see what God is going to do this very year because of it. Do you, but I, I, how do you think we manage to raise money to do all the things that we do? When an evil man cannot, you know an evil man cannot give you money, you know that very well. It's not possible. That's where they are. That's where they are. Go to America and do, go and do fundraising. 
Go and do funny things in America, see what they will do to you. They have they have cut us off again on Facebook. The the gospel is too hot. For even Facebook <laughs> to take. Too way too hot for Facebook. I thank all of you for listening. Nobody loves you more than we do. I'm being honest with you. And uh, maybe it is about time that we tell all of the GOs to start paying us at least some of the money we have been spending on championing and campaigning for Christian rights all over the world. Very, very important to do that. And I thank you all very much for listening to all this very evening. And as always, Biafra is our religion. When they ask you what is your religion, they tell them Biafra. Biafra is our religion. Here on radio, Biafra is where we worship. And we worship the only one true living God. The God of Eli. The God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. The same God that David worshipped. The same God that Jesus Christ worshipped. And might I also add, the same God that even Prophet Muhammad called Allah, indivisible, one God, and under whose command and grace we do all that we do. Let me repeat. Biafra is a religion. Here on radio, Biafra is where we worship because Chukwu